What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2020 Lexus RX 450HL. Huge thanks to Lexus for providing me with this beautiful Nori Green Pearl RX to review for you guys today. So uh, yeah, first thing I have to say is this new color for 2020 Nori Green Pearl is beautiful here in the sun and the metallic in the paint is just gorgeous. I'm partial to dark green paint but this is really really stunning and I think most people will agree. Um, but the 2020 RX has lots of nice improvements to it here. Uh, on the outside they're fairly mild but uh, you can see there the headlights are a little bit slimmer than they were before. The grille is also a little bit larger now for 2020 and so they reshaped the front bumper and all that a little bit and looks very good. Still very sharp, very Lexus in its design. Coming down to the sides here this is being the L version you know you have that longer profile so I already did uh, about two years ago a standard RX 350 F Sport you can go watch that video if you want to see the shorter wheelbase version of the RX here or the non-hybrid this one is the hybrid as well as being the long version and uh, yeah you know it uh, still looks very good here even in, in its lengthened form and you know I especially love that floating uh, C pillar treatment there in the back it looks very cool going out to the back there though they also say they slightly tweaked the taillights but I can't really even tell between the old ones and the new ones uh, still looks very good though and uh, you know the RX has always done a good job of you know standing out a little bit but also blending in nicely and so overall I think it's a very nice look still all right, so let's turn on and go for a drive. The RX is here, just have a standard Lexus key. It's just plastic. It's a little bit nicer here on the sides, but still is just plastic. But overall, you know, still a decent key. And I'm just happy that it's pretty thin and not too big or anything. But of course, it's keyless access, keyless entry and push button start. So you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the blue power button and it turns on and it's ready. And of course, this being a hybrid, it uh, doesn't have to turn on the engine in order to be ready to go. But it did just kick on the engine because the battery's a little low since I've been filming and stuff. Um, but yeah, so, you know, like any other hybrid, if you're uh, used to these at all, um, you know, the gas engine comes and goes as the vehicle deems that it's necessary. There is also an EV mode down here. You can press the button. So you can force it to stay in an EV mode if you like. Also, if you're curious to hear what the interior is like here in the RX 450HL, uh, my wife and I actually did a deep dive separate review video on the interior. I'll link that above. You can go check that out if you're curious to see the interior here. But overall, it's a very nice place to be. A uh, very typical Lexus and uh, does have some nice improvements here for 2020 though as well. Two interior changes that do contribute to the driving of the RX though is uh, first off, there's standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto now. So when you're using uh, Waze and all that kind of stuff, it's very nice in this. And it's also a touchscreen now. So uh, you can also, you know, it's a lot easier to use CarPlay and Android Auto, I think, with a touchscreen. So it's great you have that. You still have the controller down here if you'd like. The other thing relating to this screen is that uh, they also have a, a fantastic uh, panoramic view monitor now and it's a 360 view and it also has a really high resolution backup camera too and so they nicely improved those cameras and it's a very nice setup makes it much easier to park here with that optional package. All right so setting off in the RX 450HL. So um, first thing I think you notice is the spectacular visibility you have here. It is just this massive massive windshield and the A pillar are a little thicker but they're so far away that they definitely don't get in your line of sight really and you have nice uh, little extra windows here around the eight pillar too the mirrors are nicely off onto the doors I mean I think the RX offers probably the best forward visibility out of any of its competitors it is just so so good view out of the sides is great and view out of the back is also pretty good although if you do have those third row headrests up um, then it, you know it does block your vision a little bit but that's pretty standard with any three row and so overall still very easy to see out of other things to note here about the RX 450. It's really fun to hypermile, um, you know, because if you do a light enough throttle pressure, then it will stay in EV mode uh, a fair amount of the time, all the way up till I've noticed sometimes up to 40 to 45 miles per hour. Usually it will have to use the engine to accelerate, but if you're coasting and things um, and you're, you know, gentle with the gas, you can go along on electricity alone for a decent amount of the time, especially for lower speed driving. And so that's a very cool thing. And also, of course, whenever you don't have the engine on, especially, it's very refined and quiet in here. And for 2020, with this mid-cycle refresh, they also added additional welds and additional structural uh, adhesive uh, to make the body stiffer, which also helps with handling and just refinement, but it makes it a little bit quieter and more well insulated in here as well. And so it is very serene, very, very quiet. And combined with this 15 speaker Mark Levinson stereo, I mean, you crank that up, you don't hear anything going on outside. It's just, you're immersed in your sound experience. And even if the radio is off, it's a very quiet thing, and even now the engine is on and running, 
and you know it's really not too bad either it's not too buzzy or anything since it's a pretty large v6 still doesn't have to work too hard um but yeah so that's a a very nice thing but i'm gonna go ahead and put it into the sport mode which as you can see changes the tack from the uh, eco setting to the normal tack here anyway uh, let's turn down onto this back road here and see how it does and here we go okay so it's pretty responsive but it seems a little hesitant to want to take off but then it pulls very nicely. So uh, the RX 450HL is uh, no slouch really. So it runs out of the three and a half liter V6 engine still, it's nationally aspirated. That's the same as any other RX, all the compression ratio is a little different. Um, but then combined with the electric motor, it does a little more horsepower than the regular RX 350. So you have 308 horsepower here in the 450HL. And then for some reason you have 247 pound-feet of torque, which is like almost 20 pound-feet of torque less than the uh, normal V6. And the compression ratio on the motor in the hybrid version here is 13 to 1 versus 11.8 to 1 in the RX. So the higher compression ratio means this should be more powerful and for some reason we're missing out on some torque. But not a big deal. I don't think anyone in this uh, segment of shoppers is going to care. 0 to 60 time is still 8.1 seconds, which is very decent. I do feel like the electric motor gives you a little bit of boost to fill in sometimes um, and make it makes this feel a little zippier than the normal standard gasoline version, I think. And especially in sport mode here, it's a a little more responsive off the line too um, I've just noticed because most of the week I've been driving around here in normal mode and sport mode it does like to jump into action a little bit quicker but it will still go into EV mode and turn off the engine even in sport mode so um, it's not like it's constantly just going to be draining gas if you're in sport mode uh, but it does give you that nicer response but we're coming up some corners here and let's see how the RX 450HL handles should be interesting so Pitching it into a corner here, yeah, it's wallowy and does not like to turn in. I feel like I'm really wrangling this thing, pushing it through corners. It does not feel like it likes to do it, and um, it's just, yeah, it does not feel eager in any way. It feels heavy, um, it likes to lean, I can feel the tires don't have a ton of grip. And so yeah, there's multiple reasons why this feels like this. First off is the fact that this is a non-F Sport version. The last RX that I reviewed was an, an F Sport version. Those have a sportier suspension setup, a variable suspension as well. This doesn't have any of that stuff. You can't get an F Sport for the um, hybrid long version or any of the long versions. So um, you're stuck with the softer suspension setup if you want the uh, long version of the RX here. And so the extra length isn't really the main weight contributor because this this actually weighs about 500 pounds heavier than the standard RX 350 that I reviewed a couple of years ago. And so part of that comes down to the extra length. That's about 160 pounds more for this longer version. And then adding the hybrid on top of that is another 300 pounds extra as well. So all told, we're right over 4,900 pounds with this. It's 49.05. And so, um, yeah, you have a longer vehicle, a bigger vehicle, and almost 500 extra pounds of weight you're throwing around. It's going to hurt the handling. And the RX was now Ever top of its class as far as handling to begin with so this only makes things worse now it is not bad and I mean considering again we're talking about three row family haulers I don't think that uh, handling is gonna be the top thing on your priority list if it is I still think the uh, Acura MDX a spec is by far top of its class as far as best handling three row crossover now another thing that holds it back again this being the hybrid you want to have more fuel efficiency so because of that it runs 235 wide uh, Michelin all season tires here with very tall sidewalls. Now, if you uh, you know go for like an MDX, for example, like part of the reason why those handle so much better, among many other things, is it has 265 wide tires. So you have way wider tires on the MDX A spec versus what you get here on this. And so again, I think if you don't need the long version, you can still get the hybrid perks and get that with the F Sport, and then that gives you the sportier suspension setup if you are on the more enthusiastic side of your uh, crossover shopping. But unfortunately, if you want that third row, no sportiness in the suspension for you. Another thing to note though about the handling here is that they did also improve that for 2020. So to go along with the extra stiffness of the body now, um, they actually do have thicker anti-sway uh, bars in this car now. And so that gives you a little bit of a more planted feel they also improved the bushings and retuned the springs and dampers and all that kind of stuff to take advantage of that extra stiffness. And um, so, yeah, they say it should handle better because of that. Um, and so, you know, I can't compare this. I haven't driven a, you know, earlier version of this vehicle, you know, the RX 450HL exactly. So I can't attest to those improvements. But like I said, it still is a little wallowy to me. 
And just taking off there now, I have the wheels turned. And one thing that I've noticed, so this has an all-wheel drive system, but because it's the hybrid, it's not the torque vectoring all-wheel drive you get in a standard RX 350. With this, it's an e-motor all-wheel drive. So I believe it's only the electric motor. There's two electric motors here in this hybrid version. I think one of, one of them is, you know, contributing to powering the rear wheels whenever you need it. And it's not short on power, uh, but what I've noticed is that this is the third time now that whenever I'm accelerating while cornering, the it, what the inside uh, rear tire likes to spin. It did it twice in the rain and then it just did it now once on the dry. Um, so it's a very torquey back end with that electric motor, but um, you know, the traction control does intervene so you don't get bent out of shape. It's not like it's, you know, fishtailing or anything, but it does like to spin those tires, which is uh, unexpected and something that I certainly didn't experience with the standard all-wheel drive system in the RX uh, 350. So, um, just an interesting phenomenon there. I mean, it does um, mean that you have very peppy acceleration once that electric motor does kick in and uh, makes this feel a little more agile because of that. But it's just kind of disconcerting, especially if you're not an enthusiast, to have wheels spinning whenever you're just trying to accelerate while turning. Uh, again, you have to be at very low speeds and really stomp on it. So something that only be exaggerated if you're pulling out from a stop or something like that and you're you know pulling out of somewhere and turning. Um, but just an interesting thing to note there. But you know, whenever you do take your time and relax in the RX 450 HL, it is a very nice cruiser still. It's a very smooth ride, especially thanks to those tall sidewalls on the tires and everything. I don't think it's the most luxurious maybe in the class, but it is, you know, certainly very impressive and competitive with all the rest. So another thing that's a big change from the standard RX 350 is that you have a CVT transmission here in the hybrid versus the 8-speed normal automatic you have in the uh, non-hybrid. And so the CVT it's kind of uh, interesting because you know it is kind of CVT in its nature where it will want to kick in and really throw the revs up super quickly. There isn't really any normal ratios to the CVT like you might find with some other more modern CVTs like uh, Nissan's newest CVT now has normal ratios so it feels like an automatic. This CVT is still just free wheels and feels like a CVT and it's very quick and responsive and you know is certainly eager to spring into action so I don't have any issues with the transmission here. And I actually have noticed you know because sometimes with the 8 automatic a couple years ago in the RX 350 that I reviewed it was a little frustrating at times where sometimes it wouldn't give me a downshift and then whenever it gave me a downshift it gave me too much so it was almost like an on-off switch where I would have everything or nothing as far as the engine goes with the way that transmission was programmed this I don't have any of those issues it's always immediate to respond it's very fairly natural in its response and does a good job and so I think I actually kind of prefer the CVT um, I would hope that maybe they reprogrammed the transmission tuning in the 2020 standard RX with their 8-speed automatic, but until I test one of those, uh, I think I actually prefer the CVT. And the fact that you have more power with the hybrid version here um, means that, you know, considering the hybrid isn't much of an upcharge, I would probably go for a hybrid RX regardless of whether I'm going for the L version or the non-L. I think the hybrid just, you get such better fuel economy, and so it makes a lot more sense to go for this over the standard RX. Speaking of fuel economy though, so like I uh, mentioned, I've been driving this vehicle for a week already and um, in my week of driving here, I've done about 225 miles, so a decent amount of mileage, and I would say about two thirds of those miles were on the highway, which means I should be skewing higher on the uh, fuel economy ratings. But these are rated at 29 in the city, 28 on the highway, and 29 combined here for the L version. If you go for the non-L, it's a little bit higher. But um, in my 225 miles of driving here, I only managed to get 24.3. Now with the hybrid, it is more fuel efficient to drive in the city because you have more EV mode stuff going on then. On the highway, um, it doesn't use the electricity a whole lot and most of the time the engine's running on the highway. Even at higher speeds when you're just coasting, it still leaves that engine on for some reason. So, um, you know, even with it, it should have, you know, maybe I shouldn't have gotten 29 MPG then, but I should have gotten 28. And to be at 24.3 um, is kind of confusing to me you know because again no matter how bad you're driving in this you should be getting close to a 28 mpg number and so it'd be doing four mpg less basically is a little disappointing especially considering the hybrid is the fuel economy focused one and so if you're buying a hybrid chances are you care about fuel economy so i'm here to tell you that i think it's more realistic to expect 24 or 25 mpg instead of uh, you know 28 i don't know how the epa got those numbers in their tests but um you know and i haven't been driving it hard all week 
week. I've only really been driving it hard for this uh, video. Otherwise, I've been taking it pretty easy. I was just driving around uh, my in-laws and driving around friends and things like that. Just going from place to place, uh, nothing sporty. But it's not all bad with the fuel economy because I have to keep this in the context of the standard RX 350. And those are also, you know, rated uh, lower, obviously, here than the hybrid version. But in my week with the RX, I did a little less highway driving, so it's not a fair comparison. But when I drove that two years ago, my average was 16.6 mpg. So this is a full 8 mpg better, and this is a bigger, longer vehicle than the shorter RX 350 that I uh, reviewed two years ago. So. Um, the hybrid definitely makes a difference and it definitely is a huge improvement. So yes, it's not the 28 MPG, but it still is way better than a standard RX in my experience as far as fuel economy goes. So it's still certainly worth uh, you know, going up to the hybrid model. One other little complaint actually that other people noticed whenever I was driving them around was the touchy brake pedal here. So um, you know, throttle response is really good uh, and brake is very responsive, but it's too responsive. Um, it's very touchy with the brake pedal here. Part of that is I think because of the regenerative of braking because I didn't have this issue with the standard RX um, and so I think it's just with the hybrid version here the brakes are a little grabbier and a little less natural feeling because it's trying to regenerate you know some of that electricity so you just have to be very careful with the way that you apply the brake very gradual you can't be rough on the brake pedal or else you're going to be uh, making everyone car six <laughs> also while I was doing my highway drives um, one thing that I did try out was the adaptive cruise control system which now has the lane trace assist and uh, the adaptive cruise works well enough uh, you know it's very uh, you know refined with the way that it slows down and stuff it didn't get any glitches or any have any weird behavior really in my uh, time of using it but the lane trace assist which you know like lane keeping assist basically is what it is um, that wasn't great and so it's still it's one of those systems where it wants to help you steer but it's not doing all the steering for you some of the other systems like Volvo's pilot assist uh, system that I can just basically rest my hand on the wheel and it does all the steering this it's still if you just if you aren't active with the steering um, it really it will go on to the painted lines a little bit and it's not super dedicated to holding the lane and doing all the work for you so um, it's a nice guide but it's not it's not as relaxing to use as some of the more advanced uh, lane keeping assist systems on the highway that really are dedicated to making sure you're staying in the lane and doing all the steering for you. But it still is nice technology to have. Of course, you also do have standard automatic emergency braking, all those types of things. Blind spot monitoring is still part of an option package, unfortunately, but this one has that. That's nice. Another safety thing, this one has the optional heads up display, which is very nice and large and colorful and gives you lots of good info there. The last thing to mention very briefly though is the pricing here on the RX 450HL. And so so um, Lexus is still one of the few that offers a normal hybrid in this segment. Now, recently there's been a few new competitors that have offered plug-in hybrid stuff like the Ford Explorer, Lincoln Aviator, and one from a couple years ago, the Volvo XC90. Um, those are all going to be plug-in hybrids, a little bit more expensive. They're definitely all, you know, like over 70 grand for those plug-in hybrid versions, and they have electric range, and they're more advanced than this standard hybrid system. The only real direct competitor to this vehicle, as far as, uh, you know, luxury segment stuff goes, is the Acura MDX. Sport Hybrid. Now, I have not reviewed the Sport Hybrid version of the MDX, um, but it is a very similar setup. has a little bit more horsepower, I think about a dozen more horsepower, um, but is a very similar setup. And um, yeah, I think the MDX does a couple of things better, like the third row um, is a little more spacious in the MDX and uh, is a little bit of a better setup as far as getting into the third row. And a few other things, like I said, the handling's better in the MDX. Um, so as far as hybrids go, I mean, it's hard to say without driving the hybrid version of the MDX first, but um, on paper, I think the MDX, you know, might have a little bit of an edge. Um, it's also a couple thousand dollars cheaper, but these are also very uh, competitively priced. Again, for you know the hybrid uh, functionality to have that, it's actually not much more expensive than regular RX. So um, for the 450HL long version here, they start around fifty-seven and a half thousand dollars. This one, as tested, is uh, sixty-five three forty. So um, you know, I think that still is pretty decent uh, for what you get here getting a three-row crossover the hybrid to get you know decent fuel economy all that makes this pretty compelling in my opinion and so um, you know if you're in the market for a three-row and you don't need to have a huge third row I think this is a very compelling option especially if you want something in the luxury segment and like I said there's really not much else to choose from aside from the MDX and so uh, it's just great that they're offering a hybrid because I think it makes so much sense um, because you know yes it's not getting the 28 mpg that they claim but it still is you know really good fuel economy for a three-row 
micro crossover and especially a luxury one at that with all the extra weight of all those luxury features and stuff. I think it's a very compelling package. And especially if you have a commute with lots of inching up in traffic and idling, all that kind of stuff. I mean, you're going to save so much money over the long term with this hybrid, um, you know, just having that electric motor do all that work for you and uh, not wasting a bunch of gas. And so I think that's where this would really shine and be a really great choice. So anyway, huge thanks to Lexus for providing me with the RX 450HL to review for you guys today. Let me know your thoughts on these in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.